<laughs> hey guys, a um, little bit of an impromptu Facebook Live. I thought I would uh, jump in and uh, do a quick one. It's been a while. I think it's been over a month since we've done a Facebook Live. So I figured, hey, what the heck, it should be fun. Um, there's a lot of news going on, a lot of fun stuff. Um, I just got in off the water, so I'm kind of sunburned and uh, still trunks are wet and everything, but uh, doing some fun video, doing some fun recording. So uh, I'm actually here in the garage, I'm putting stuff away, uh, but I thought I'd stop in and talk. <laughs> um, we did, a, we did a little bit of a question yesterday as to regards to topics. Um, I didn't think that we had enough to really go in depth. Uh, so you guys threw out some ideas and I thought I'd answer those here as well as answer some of, uh, hey Randy, good to see you. Um, and we thought, uh, I thought it'd be a good idea to address some of those as well as some news that's coming up. We actually have some really exciting news that's coming up and I can't really talk about everything, uh, like contractually, uh, but I can hint. <laughs> so I'm gonna hint a lot, so if you pay attention, you know, perk up your radar. So anyway, um, first and foremost, uh, we did get a couple questions from, from yesterday's post, so I thought I'd answer those, and um, one of them was wanting to do a comparison of aftermarket parts. And believe it or not, when I was at Mudbug, I sat down with Jerry Gaddis, and Jerry and I were kind of spitballing this very same idea. Um, the biggest one that came up to mind was a Riva intercooler versus a Fizzle intercooler versus stock. And he was, he was arguing that it'd probably be best to do it on a Yamaha, I said that's fine, um, although he does have an RXTX 300, so we were going to kind of pair pair up together and, and do something that way. Um, the problem is that in discussing it with Jerry, re we realized it was really much of a, really more of a wash. And believe it or not, and this is from Jerry Gaddis, so I'm kind of telling tales out of school. But um, the main the main conversation in regards to inter intercooler quality was uh, how do we measure this? And, uh, you know, are you measuring, uh, you know, are we measuring internal engine, uh, you know, uh, operating temperatures? Are we measuring heat soak? Or, you know, wh what exactly are we measuring here? Are we measuring power gains? And how do we do that without using really an engine dyno? And how do we do that on the water? And quite frankly, we, we started thinking about the other racers and the racers who are using aftermarket intercoolers and what came up was that the third generation the new generation Riva intercooler performance wise is on par with the fizzle um, for a while there the fizzle was was beating out the Riva um, but Riva's latest edition of their intercooler their high performance intercooler uh, Jerry's like listen and I, I knew this from other racers too, so it echoed everything I'd already heard, was that he said, performance-wise, they're identical, he said, but when it came to close course racing, guys going around corners, you're getting a lot of Gs, you know, you're not just going in a straight line. The straight line guys, a fizzle's fine. He said, um, the, biggest, the biggest difference was that, I feel like I'm really close to the camera, sorry. Um, the, the biggest difference between those two aftermarket intercoolers was the mounting bracket and that Riva's mounting bracket was far superior. Uh, the fitment's better, it's a tighter fitment, it's a little further out of the way, and it's also a tighter fitment, so the bracket itself is superior. And uh, apparently some of the Fizzle guys have found that, that uh, the um, mounting bracket itself was inferior in comparison to stock or the Riva intercooler uh, mounting bracket and so they've had to modify theirs that's not to say anything towards the intercooler the intercooler itself is fantastic it's just that the mounting bracket um, they a lot of guys who are getting their hands you know their elbow deep in their skis uh, they're finding that the Riva 
bracket is superior. So again, that was in, in a roundabout way answering one of those shootout questions. Like, okay, well, how do we, how do we compare? Um, we also did that very same, um, that very same kind of shootout in a way um, when it came to the, uh, the Fizzle has a Garrett interior. You know what, that's a good question. I do not know. Uh, and what's interesting is that uh, Reva's really quiet about who's building their new generation intercooler. And so we simply, you know, it's the secret 11 herbs and spices. We're not really privy to that stuff. So they, a lot of people just don't want to give away a lot of proprietary information. So um, it, if I find out, I'll let you know. Uh, I can go back and I can answer this. Um, but uh, as far as actual operate, actual operation, uh, the, the latest edition of the Riva, which is the more expensive one, because uh, it's superior, with the, it's got the larger, uh, it's got the larger housing and everything like that, um, is been rated by more people that uh, ask them. I believe it is, so that's good. But yeah, oh, I agree, hundred percent. Yeah, Garrett's got a name behind it, so that's fantastic. Um, doesn't Garrett make? They make a lot of applications for uh, like the rally racer intercoolers and stuff like that. That's how I know the name. Okay, anyway, sorry, I'm going on a tangent. Um, but uh, we did do another similar shootout between stock, Riva Pro Series, and the Works Sponsons in the FX, Yamaha, and the ST3 Hall Sea-Dews. And that was less of, this is good, this is bad, this is good, this is bad. It, it wasn't a shootout. It was a trying, it was, I've, I've worked my butt off on that article for like three or four weeks straight of really truly understanding hull design and how a Sponson uh, interacts with hull design. And if you guys look up that article on the Watercraft Journal, if you want me to hyperlink it in the comments here, I will. Um, that article, quite frankly, I'm super proud of it. <laughs> like, I'm super proud of it. Um, but it also was one of our most thorough when it came to understanding hull design, sponson design, and why you're paying extra for the Riva versus the Works. There's a lot of guys out there who are buying Works primarily because it's the cheaper option. And that's fine. And, and I get it. I understand 100%. We need, an, we need an ST3 Hall Riva intake grade test versus stock. Yes, Chris. Yes, <laughs> that's happening. <laughs> you gotta give me, you gotta give me about a month. Uh, the COVID thing's gotta die down. The temperatures are in the triple digits right now in Florida, which means it's pretty much gonna kill all the COVID um, and reopen everything because everyone's gonna go inside for air conditioning in Florida and the love bugs are gonna be out and it's gonna be hell. So <laughs> everyone in Florida knows what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, if uh, I'm gonna be spending some time down at, at Riva and on their test lake, I'm, I'm hoping for two days. Uh, normally their schedule's too tight to give me two days, but given uh, there's something really cool about Riva's intake grade off, uh, offerings for the ST3. Um, and I'll, I'll go ahead and talk about it, even though it, I'll probably get in trouble for it. Um, and I know I talked about it before was that, uh, Riva spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to get a really, really quality intake rate. And they made one that was just berserk. Like it'll, it'll stick the ski to the ceiling. Like super super traction all right like g-rated you know pirelli tires you know for 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 moto you know for motor racing uh moto gp racing i'm like super 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 sticky intake rate and the problem was that everyone who tested it like loved it they're like this is the best damn thing we've been like it's phenomenal but here's the kicker it scrubbed about two 
two and a half to three miles per hour off the really fast guys. So if you were doing GPS, we're not talking speedo, all right? Even though the speedo is GPS, it's still a little enthusiastic. Let's say it that way. Um, but that intake grate on like the guys who are going GPS 85, 86, it scrub off about two to three miles per hour. So you're doing 82 and a half, 83. But you could snap the bars around a buoy and it would just go like, like a Tron motorcycle. Remember Tron with the motorcycles, the, the, the speeder bikes or whatever they were? Um, they're like, dude, it, it, it's frightening. Like it's, it'll throw you. You got to have foot wedges like Brian Baldwin's foot wedges that we tested on his, his 84 or 83 mile an hour FX. Um, you got to have foot wedges. You got to be like strapped in. Uh, but like Jesus Garcia and the guys who were uh, working in the R and D center at Riva, they're like, dude, this intake grate is stupid. But the problem is, is that how do you advertise an intake grate? that's going to scrub off two or three miles per hour. I mean, money's money, marketing is marketing. And there's, there's more dumb people than there are smart people. Uh, that's a mean thing to say, but it is true. And <laughs> there's a lot of people who just go, I need to be faster than the guy on the lake. And I got to be the fastest guy. And uh, I can't lose or I can't lose mile per hour. So they won't consider handling, they won't consider traction, they just want top speed. And that's unfortunate, but wiser minds at Riva said, hey, listen, man, that's great, put it, on a, put it on the shelf, we might come back to that one, but give me one that doesn't scrub the mile per hour. So they, they tweaked the blades and they tweaked a couple other things, they extended all, they extended all the vertical runner blades. All right, so let's say we're looking at it vertically, all right? And here's the bottom of the ski, here's the top of the ski, here's the intake grate, okay? And <laughs> Tron, showing your age. Yeah, sadly. Um, but the, the vertical runners were deepened. They're not so narrow, they're actually deepened. Not, not thick, not wide, but deep. Okay, I don't, I'm trying to use my hands to visualize this on camera. Um, but then they, they extended the chip that's the bottom blade at the end, but they also uh, they also extended and, and altered the pitch of the actual top loader, uh, the top loader wing. And uh, I believe it's a split wing. You'll see, if you look at it, um, the center one's like this, and then the side ones are, are actually staggered off the side. And that, that, allowed the, that allowed the ST3 to maintain really good traction, superior traction to stock. Um, but not lose any mile per hour. So they were happy with that one. They're like, oh, okay, okay, that's great. Let's, let's run with that one. So they're running with that one. But Jesus and the other guys at the R&D Center are like, dude, dude, this one is, is bonkers. So I'm begging them to let me do one, two, three. Um, and that'll be on the, like their 83, 80, 84 mile an hour, like stage two kit. I'm gonna go down there, ride the stage two kit, with a stock intake grate and be like, okay, that scared the crap out of me. And <laughs> then we're gonna pull it on the trailer, pull the intake grate off, put the number two on the retail one and go out there and ride and go around the buoys and you know, really yank on it. And my neighbor's mowing his lawn right now. So you might hear it in the background. Um, and then I'm gonna beg him to let me do the number three one and just see if I can't throw myself off of it. Cause you know, that's, that's the sacrifices I make for my readership. You know, I, I'm such a great guy. Anyway, don't listen to me. Anyway, uh, so yes, Chris, want to do an intake grade shootout on the ST3. I think that's going to be a knock out of the park. Um, and that also goes hand in hand with uh, some stuff that we have potentially heard from uh, CDU in the future that there's going to be some uh, in the uh, through the accessory group we might see some really cool handling packages available through c -Doo. Um That's not confirmed. I don't, I don't have any press release. I have no non-compete. I've heard it from a couple guys, not through Riva, um, but 
Uh, because again, you can get uh, some Riva stuff through the accessory group from Sidu for like the tricks or the sparks um, and a few other things. So it's gonna be very plausible that we're gonna see some handling packages uh, made available through Sidu's parts and accessory group. That means that Joe Blow can walk into a dealership and say, hey, I want that new RXTX, but I want the stage one or the level one handling package. And they're like, okay, boom, out of the dealership, it's dealer installed parts. And so now, um, you know, if you have any beef, you can go back to the dealer and the dealer is like, oh yeah, we put those on. So it's not, you haven't messed with it. You know, we put them on. So that kind of segues into another topic I wanted to talk about. Um, and that is uh, warranty claim stuff. Um, I got called out on a group, uh, unfortunately, and I'm very sorry to hear this. No one likes to hear this kind of stuff, uh, but a, uh, uh, I guess a new owner or, well, no, he's not new to personal watercraft, but uh, a guy had gone out and bought a brand new 2020 FX uh, SVHO Cruiser, a red and silver, really nice unit. Uh, we just did a video testing the same unit. Fantastic ski. It's actually one of my favorites, uh, personal favorites. And, you know, I, I share that not as, you know, listen to what Kevin says, but hey, this is, this fits my needs. This fits my riding style. And this has all the attributes that I look for in a performance three-seater runabout. So anyway, he had gone out, he's racked up, I don't even know how many, how many hours on it. And, uh, um, the pictures that he's posting on Facebook and the, f uh, they're everywhere right now is almost the entire hall has delaminated and pulled itself apart. And he's saying that, uh, Yamaha is saying that, um, or Yamaha is contesting that there's impact points. And so he hit something and so he's going to have to pay for it. And that's, that sucks. That, that, that's awful. Um, and I mean, my heart goes out to him. I, ho I hope he, he's able to contest it and get the, get the repairs made. And it's going to, I hate to say it, it's going to take a long time to fix that haul. And what that means is that he's pretty much out of the season. All right. They can't expedite that and, um, that or wholly replace the ski. Uh, and that typically does not happen. Uh, that's unfortunate uh there's but we've seen that with a lot of units in recent years they don't necessarily just replace your ski uh they don't they don't just go i'll go into the dealership and we'll comp you a new boat they want to they want to repair that unit um so i'm going to give a little i'm going to give you an example and some hints and hopefully it doesn't fall on deaf ears and I know it's upsetting. And unfortunately, there's a lot of contention of I'm the consumer versus the manufacturer. And it's me versus you. And, and especially if you've got a lot of money tied up in it, oh boy, you're gonna be real upset. You're gonna be fit to be tied. And I understand, I 100% understand. But let me give you a couple examples of what's going on and what I suggest. Um, first and foremost, if you have a major, if you have a major, well, no, no, let me, let me, let me, let me back up. Let me back up. Okay. Um, 2014. Yeah. 2014 was the first model year of the Yamaha SVHO engine. Okay. And for 2014 and 2015, um, that was the hot dog engine. A lot of guys were like, oh man, I gotta have that. I gotta have an FZR with the SVHO motor. <laughs> Sign me up, I want that ski. That's, that's the way to go. And for good reason, that was the race boat to have. They're now drag racing that ski. It's fantastic. So a lot of guys immediately started jumping into those engines and started tuning them and going fast and, and really making some power because they had they had made a lot of headway with the FZR, with the SHO engine, with the super high output. 
So a lot of guys are like, okay, listen, I'm gonna put my supercharger on it, I'm gonna do my intercooler kit, I'm gonna do this, X, Y, Z, yada, yada, yada. And they were making killer power. And all of a sudden the timing chain started to just shred, all right? And guys started snapping timing chains. Um, and this happened, like, right, not right out of the gate, but pretty quickly with the high performance guys. And they're like, oh shoot, what do I do? Well, the problem is that they're like, well, I was making you know, 350, 400 horse out of my ski. I can't really go back to the dealership and go, I don't know what happened. You know, they kind of have to fix it or own it. So that was a problem. Then uh, we started seeing normal Joes who just go out and buy SVHOs snapping timing chains. And if you were watching the internet, if you were on the forums, and if you were on Facebook, all you saw were snapping Yamaha Tommy chains. You thought they were made out of freaking paper and bubble gum. You were like, what is going on here? Here's the problem. For two years, from 14, 14 and 15, they changed it in 16, um, the engine remained the same. And if you were to look online and you were a hardcore PwC guy like I am and a lot of you guys are because uh, who tunes into a freaking Facebook live session in the middle of a Wednesday uh, <laughs> uh, if you, the hardcore PwC guys you're like oh my gosh these motors grenade these things are awful oh my gosh I'm I'm never gonna touch it well the reality was was that of all the units with with equipped with an SVHO engine sold in 14 and 15 all right so you have the F, you have the FZR, FZS. You have two models there. And FZR had two colorations, and the FZS, I believe, had one traditionally. Correct me if I'm wrong. I might be wrong. Then you had the FX SVHO, the FX SVHO Cruiser, and then you had the FX SVHO limited all right so we're looking at five units well five units typically the math is around three thousand units per uh well no 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 no. so 14 okay so the two years we're looking at about twenty two thousand units no my mouth's off it's about 24, it's about 24,000 units, okay, equipped with that engine. From what I have been told, this is what I've been told. You can argue it, you can say I'm full of crap and okay, fine. What I've been told is that Yamaha has on record less than 120 claims of engines going bad, all right, because of timing chains, all right. So, quite literally, two and a half percent of total units. Well, let's look at automotive numbers. Because people go, oh, they have to have a recall. They have to recall the engine. Hold on. Pump the brakes. For recalls, I know in the automotive industry, it has to be an 18% failure rate in order for the, for a manufacturer whether it's Lexus, Toyota, you know, Toyota Lexus to Dodge to GM to Ford it's 18%. 18% failure rate across the board. They're looking at 3%. So in their mind Yamaha's like, well this is definitely not worth a recall. Um but ooh still doesn't look good online. Okay, Instagram, Facebook, everything's going berserk. And then people are calling up going, hey, I just bought an SVHO. Should I be afraid that my timing chain's going to let go? And dealer's like, no, you're fine. Go out and ride. You're 60 years old. I really don't think you're going to hurt it. So corporate-wise, and let's just be honest here. Let's, let's just, a lot of you guys own your own businesses. A lot of you guys manufacture your own product. So think like your Yamaha, just just for fun, okay? If you're looking at a 3% failure rate, you're gonna sit there and you're gonna go, well, 
I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater here. Maybe I can just address these individuals individually. I have an upset customer. I don't want them trash talking my brand or my products. Let me address this guy personally. So here's what happened in those two years. People started coming in, you know, the 120 people who had fit, who had reported through proper channels, meaning they'd gone to their dealership, their dealership had filed a, a service request and had petitioned for a new engine. You know, they go through these proper channels. They did everything they were supposed to do because people pay for warranty. And so they came in and if the dealership said, listen, this is a stock ski, this guy hasn't drilled holes in it. He hasn't, you know, put a freaking, you know, uh, uh, you know, Garrett turbo on there, or, you know, <laughs> you know, a big spall turbo or some insane thing. Um, but no, this is a bone stock FZR or FX and the motor, like, you know, the timing chain let go and they go, Oh, okay, well let's check it out. What is this guy? You know, how long has he owned the product? Is he a long-term They They look up your service record. If you have a service record, they go, oh, okay, he's a loyal customer. Let's get him dialed in. All right. I was told, I was told this, this is, this is a anecdote was that in one case, a guy had gone through his dealership and the dealership said, we smell foul play. We think you did something screwy. Well, the guy actually was a first time owner and he documented on Instagram every damn minute he took his family out on that ski. Okay. He was a fanboy. He just, he's like, I'm so excited. I get to buy this Yamaha and I'm going to go out and ride and I'm going to take my kids out on an inner tube and we're, I'm going to take the wife out. It's going to be all this fun. And all I did was just post on Facebook and Instagram, how much he loved his ski. And then it goes down and he's like, Oh my gosh, did I do something? Cause he didn't know. He just didn't know. And people are like, Oh no, man, time change are garbage. All that ski's crap. Oh, you should have bought a sea You should have bought a cow. And they screamed and yelled at him. And, and he kind of went to the defense. He goes, no, man, I, this thing's great. He goes, but let me get this thing fixed. I have warranty. So he goes to the dealership and the dealership had their head up their butt and they're like, no, it's a, you did, you did something. You screwed with it. And he's like, well, no, I didn't. And he presented documentation. Then here's the kicker. While he was contesting with his dealership and that was a point of frustration that sucks. I'm sorry. The guy ever had to even deal with it. All right. Was that. He also went to customer, he, he, he found a customer service line at Yamaha and he also messaged Yamaha directly, their Facebook page and the Instagram page. And he said, listen, I love this ski. The motor went kaboom on me. My dealership thinks that I'm a hot rodder. You know, I'm not, I'm Joe Suburban. I'm a real boring dude. I just bought this thing and it's really fun. And believe it or not, it was revealed to me that the marketing department checked out, they have interns or whomever, and they went and they looked at this guy's social media. And all they saw was that he was a super fanboy and he was heartbroken that his ski was broken, that he wasn't going to be able to ride the rest of the weekend. They expedited a new engine. All right. They created a motor and got him a motor and told the dealership, you get this guy back on the water rare case. Okay. But what do we learn from this kids? Had the guy gone online and trash talked Yamaha and just mother F the, the dealership and trash talked you know, just the dealer's crap and the skis crap. And I'm so mad and, rah, and I'll just want to pull the drain plugs and push this thing into the lake. He might not have gotten that motor at least not so quickly. Let's just say it that way. All right. But they moved it. Now, what happens to a guy who de his whole hull delaminates? He comes into the dealership. The dealership's like, no, nah, man, you hit a tree or you ran over, you ran this thing up a beach or up a driveway. Or if the guy said, listen, I'm going to prove it to you. I got my buddies who were with me with their wives and their kids or whatever, they come in or they sign a piece of paper 
And the guy does some due diligence. He comes in, he goes, listen, we were on a pleasure cruise. We were farting around on the lake or the river, or wherever the heck he was. And he goes up, but that guy didn't take, took the time to warm up his ski and checking the cooling system? What? No, that's just, no, no, no. I don't know what you're talking about. This has nothing to do with your cooling system. So anyhow, if in this imaginary case scenario, this guy has his hull delaminate and it naturally delaminates. He doesn't hit anything. It doesn't rip itself apart. Or I mean, it, rip, it naturally rips itself apart. You didn't like run it up a beach or run up a launch ramp or something like that. Um, rather than taking your grievances to Facebook, but diligently going through your dealership and if the dealership's a, a jerk, fine, go around the dealership. Call customer service, go to the Facebook, go to the social media outlets and go and just be desperate and be like, I don't know what to do. I, I have footage of where it delaminated. I have pictures of it. This thing broke. I love the ski. I want the ski. I, I, I want to ride this thing for another 10 years. Guys, help me out here. What do I need to do? You can file properly. And you cannot, be a, you cannot attack the brand. Um, I'll give you another example. All right. So the first batch of ST3 hulls, the sea dues okay? Um, there was... There was a threat. There were people going around saying, oh, they crack and they split and they sink. Okay. But they were seeing that mainly on a lot of racers. Well, one racer races for sea -Doo, Or doesn't race for sea but he races a sea and sea gives them some product and, you know, a few bucks off. Um, his hull breaks at one of the Piaqua X races. Okay. Really rough water. Beat the crap out of it. Crack the hole. This is when it first came out. All right. People started snapping pictures, and he's and he went up and he goes, "Delete those posts. Don't. Do not post this stuff. Do not speak for me. Do not ruin my relationship with with Cedu. And he went through the proper channels. Was a nice guy. Was easy to deal with. Manufacturer was very happy to deal with them. They got his ski repaired. Okay, you can, you can attract a lot more flies with honey than you can vinegar. All right, taking your grievances to Facebook isn't really going to change anything. Because Facebook is where the world goes to complain. Let's just be real honest. You don't like politics? Post something on Facebook. You don't like your neighbor? Post something on Facebook. You don't like a movie? Make a group and talk about it in Facebook. Whatever. Um, it's, it's where people, it's where everyone goes to complain. I'm sorry, that's the way the world is right now. So I feel like I'm talking to my kids. I apologize. Um, but you can, you can really get far being an easier person to deal with. All right? People like to deal with someone who's easy to work with. You're pleasant. You're cooperative. Stand your ground. Don't be a pushover. Don't be a weenie. It's your product, or it's, it's your it's your purchase. You spent money on it. For all me, you know, by all means, fight for your rights. But be pleasant about it, and be easy to work with. You believe it or not, they will happily work with you. A lot. This is going to go in and out, in and out of guys' ears. I understand. There's dudes who are so mad and hate c and hate Yamaha and hate Cowie or hate manufacturers or hate big business or ah, they're full of hate, all right, that they're not going to listen. They're going to be like, screw Kevin and he's just shooting rainbows because Kevin's a shill and he gets paid and blah, 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 blah. Well, fine, but I'm, I'm talking about guys who got their skis fixed, all right? You want your ski fixed and you want it done quick? It happens. Be nice. Be easy to work with. Be a pest, but be a nice pest. Be like Ned Flanders and be like showing up at your dealership with a box of donuts. You know, I, I've literally heard people doing that. They're like, hey guys, hey, 
brought, I brought donuts and coffee. And all of a sudden the tech goes, hey, you know, I got a couple extra hours. I could probably squeeze your ski in. You know, you're, you're in the back of the line. But this guy is so stinking nice. He's annoying as hell, but he's really nice. Let's just get his, let's get his sea out of here. It happens. It works. Anyway, so that's my two cents when it comes to that. Um, skis break. Cars break. Airplanes break. Helicopters break. Everything breaks. And sometimes it's new stuff. And it sucks. That's why there's warranties. So stay on top of your warranty. Play nice with your dealership. And be easy to work with. Uh, it's really the best advice I can give. Um, I mean, dealers, dealers want customers. Manufacturers want customers. Manufacturers want loyal customers. I'll tell you what, that dude with the Yamaha that I told you about with the engine, that guy's still singing Yamaha's praises. Are you kidding me? When that motor got swapped out and that engine got dialed in and he was ready to go for the rest of the season, and they're like, man, we ex they expedited this and they, they treated me like a king. Holy cow. I mean, besides wearing a, a mini skirt and pom-poms, he's the biggest cheerleader for Yamaha right now. Right? It worked out. It worked really well. Okay? So, I'm just saying, don't, don't, air, your, don't air your grievances and trash talk Yamaha or Sea-Doo or any of the manufacturers. You want to know why? They go online and they read these things. And there's a lot of times they go, screw that guy. And other times they go, I like that guy. Let's get him fixed. The squeaky wheel stuff, there's too many squeaky wheels in this world. They just are. And sometimes people only want to complain. That's all they want to do. Some people just want to complain. And it's really hard for a manufacturer to go, oh, dude, just let him be. We'll, we'll just put him in the process and we'll work him through. Or let's, let's help that guy out. That guy's a fan. And if we help him out and get him back on the water quick, he's going to be our, he'll be singing our praises. So anyway, that's my two cents when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, it's towards the end of June right now. Uh, we just started getting some racing going. We had our race coverage go up, uh, yesterday for last weekend's race in uh, Panama City Beach. It was really cool. Um, we were sorry that we saw Craig Warner announce his retirement. Makes sense. Um, I mean, Craig's got other stuff going on. His, his son's a, actually a really talented go-kart racer and he's a, he's a young man who's got, <laughs> he's got some skill. And uh, so good for Craig, good for Craig and, and his family and, and uh, Craig and Jessica are actually really super cool people, and and I, I'm lucky to call Craig a friend. And um, uh, anyway, happy trails, buddy. Uh, we are we're gonna have uh, Jessica Waters at Lake Hartwell for the next uh, pro watercross race, and that'll be uh, probably the same time next week that we have coverage because the race is happening this weekend, and so we're happy to get some race coverage back. Isn't that nice? Um, you know, it'll return to normalcy a little bit. Uh, but then we've got some really fun videos coming out. And I'm actually pretty excited about it. I can't talk in total detail about some stuff. Uh, but let's see. Next video is kind of a fun ride on our GTI SE 170. That uh, was a lot of, was actually a, a blast. And, um, that'll be live next week uh then after that will be our review of the 2020 gp 1800 r ho which is the artist formerly known as the vxr <laughs> um so we're we're uh i i have a hard time not calling it the vxr i'm sorry i thought the vxr was a cool name that was a cool ski i thought the alphabet soup stuff was that's personal opinion some guys love it, whatever. It's not my cup of tea. Uh, but the HO review will be after uh, after the fun run. So probably three weeks from now. And then at the end of, towards mid-July, 
mid to late July, we'll have our mud bug, um, mud bug event coverage. And then we'll probably squeeze in another Yamaha review of the 2020s because August 19th, yeah, August 19th, we will have the uh, 2021 Yamaha full lineup video. And that's, that's going to be a tough one. Um, I'm, I'm under the gun for that one. And, uh, but the 2021 stuff is mid-August, mid to mid-ish, mid late-ish August. And, you know, and um, that's going to be kind of a general overview of here are the changes, here are the new, new units, here's what they've changed on existing units, kind of going over the whole kit and caboodle. Then it's going to be a whole lot of Yamaha content <laughs> um, because I'll have individual reviews on at least minimum four, if not five, 2021 Yamaha Wave Runners. Uh, that, that's a two day sprint of filming that, I, that we're doing. And uh, that's gonna be really exciting. I'm gonna be wiped out. I'm gonna be wiped out. Um, then uh, I have one, one or two maintenance articles planned. Uh, I should have a Riva story on the ST3 probably early September. Probably. Uh, that's the hope. Then we get into the new sea dews And sea dews coming out swinging too. And Yamaha is coming out swinging. Guys, I'm going to tell you this right now. And I'm... I'm trying to be somber about this. I'm not trying to be all hyped up. Uh, 2021, if everything goes, well now, I mean, I know for certainty everything for Yamaha, if everything goes according, according to what I understand for Sea-Doo, 2021 is going to be a bare knuckle, absolute bloody fist fight of muscle craft and performance watercraft between Yamaha and sea um, It should be really exciting. And they, both of those guys know it. Uh, they know it because, quite frankly, so many watercraft are sold out right now that there's insane demand. Um, that insane demand, they're banking on coming into 2021. And... Um, as long as people don't vote uh, for, for the party of chaos, I'm going to get political. I don't care. Uh, as long as you don't vote for chaos and destruction and you vote for freedom and free speech and uh, equal rights under the law and law and order in November for our American friends, as long as you still revere this country for being uh, the shining city on a hill and you believe that our constitution was written by godly inspired men, um, if, if everyone within the sound of my voice does this, then I have hope that we will pull out of this nosedive that uh, the cancer of entitlement has brought us into. So I'm trying not to be really on the nose here, but for you guys who are listening, I think you understand what I'm saying. The manufacturers are very enthusiastic about where the United States economy can go. And where the United States economy goes, the rest of the world follows. That's a fact. It's a fact. If you don't agree, you need to read some economic history. Um, Thomas Sowell for some light reading. But uh, 
Milton Freeman if you really want to get down the rabbit hole. But anyhow, um, guys, we're, we're really looking at an insane 2021 year when it comes to personal watercraft and personal watercraft sales. They're going to produce a lot of product. Um, when all the manufacturers fired up uh, their plants again, they didn't go back to making 2020s. They were making 2021s. So they are stocking up on 2021s right now. Um, and what Yamaha is coming in with is going to be pretty exciting. And for you C2 guys, I think a lot of you C2 guys are going to drop. I, I Honestly, Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist is going to be sick with watercraft. That's, that's my opinion. My opinion is um, there's going to be a lot of people putting their skis up for sale in November. As soon as Trump gets reelected, Craigslist is going to go sick with, with personal watercraft. I'm telling you right now. Because three outlets are being allowed to see the new Yamahas early. We're second on that list. Um, three media outlets and one of them is a boating outlet the, the guy's not even going to spend time on the watercraft I mean he might he's definitely not going to ride three of those units winky wink um, he's going to be spending time on the boats but uh, me and one other media outlet that I'm not supposed to talk about well I'm not supposed to talk about any of this I'm going to get in trouble um are going to be the only ones allowed to ride this stuff early and we're gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna thrash i'll, I'll be up till three in the morning um for a week uh getting video and written content and pictures and galleries for yamaha ready and i do the same thing for you for c -Doo. um and c yeah c -Doo knows it they're like dude you're the only guy who does it you're the only guy who stays up till one in the morning and does the press release uh so <laughs> uh, so anyway, that's, uh, and then I don't know, I, I'm, I'm not sure when I get my hands on the new CDs yet, uh, not yet, but if everything goes according to plan, I'm telling you, I'm telling you guys, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to hype this any more than it is, but 2021 is going to be the year of just insane, insane muscle craft, insane performance watercraft. So it's gonna be pretty exciting. Um, it's gonna be really exciting. So anyhow, uh, that's, let's see. Talked about warranty stuff. Talked about shootouts. Let's talk about adventure rides. And I'll, I'll do this really quickly because I think I'm over an hour already. Um, someone asked me my, fa my favorite spots that I've ever ridden. Um, I've done a lot of I've done a lot of different rides. I haven't gone. I haven't done nearly as many rides as some of you guys. Uh, Billy Cruz, Billy Duplessis, you guys, you're my heroes. <laughs> you dudes rack up more time than I could ever imagine. I, I'm telling you, if I was independently wealthy and had a fleet of skis, I don't think I, I I don't think I'd ride as much as these guys do. So, God bless them. I, I'm impressed, and I just beg them to go on rides with them, but then I can't make a 10-hour drive down to go on a two-day ride. Uh, <laughs> but uh, some of the prettiest, some of the prettiest country I've ever been on, uh, some of the roughest water, some of the most diverse stuff I've ever seen. Um, I'll tell you one location that gave me everything. Uh, the first day beat me to death. The second day was singularly the most fun, natural race course I'd ever been on. And the third day was just being able to see history and just be wowed that I was riding a jet ski through the territory. And that was uh, around Ocracoke Island and Pamplico Sound um, in North Carolina inside of the Intracoastal Waterway. And getting to Ocracoke Island was the roughest water I'd ever been in. And I'm not joking. I think we had like 30 or 40 mile an hour winds. 
and we were on ultras and I was getting destroyed. I was getting destroyed. Uh, I lost two pairs of sunglasses, had a pair of goggles blown off my face. Um, it was, I wanted to, I almost wanted to go home. I was just like, okay, this isn't fun anymore. Uh, <laughs> but easily one of the best rides. Went up to Ocracoke, stayed the night there. Um, then the next day we went through Snake, Snake Creek and these winding man, I mean, just mangrove trails, full speed, pinned out, knee, knees in the tray, just shoulders up, cutting turns. Never, I never parked it in the weeds either. I would, you Florida guys, you have no excuse. You live there. I was a virgin in this stuff and I just didn't want to park it in the weeds. I was, and I was going on a, at the time there were 260s. We were on a 260X. Um, but yeah, what a ride. That was some of the prettiest country. I also performed uh, a, very impressive handstand on my handlebars. Uh, uh, I was cutting it a little too close to shore and brought that ski to a sudden stop. And believe it or not, and they, they, they got a one really blurry picture that I don't have anymore, but I went vertical over the handlebars with my arms, my elbows locked and flew feet over the handlebars and the next thing I knew, I was sitting on my butt, waist deep in water, with my arm around the nose of the ski, parked right here, with the engine still running because my lanyard was still hooked on. And I was just sitting there going, what happened? <laughs> so, yeah, well, I didn't, park, I didn't park the ski in the weeds, but I did, I, I did eat some humble pie. Um, but that was a fantastic, that absolutely fantastic ride. Um, the third day... For guys, I, I'm a history, I'm a, a U.S. history dork, and I love this kind of stuff. Um, just north of Ocracoke is Kitty Hawk, and obviously, Kitty Hawk Beach is where the Wright brothers were first in flight, um, and that's amazing. You know, a pair of American brothers who owned a bicycle shop figured out how to make an airplane figure that out then when you come back into the sound when you go past the lighthouse which is this historical 200 year old lighthouse you come back in and right at the isthmus um believe it or not that is where they found the the uh the remains of queen's Anne, the queen anne's revenge the queen anne's revenge is the famous uh spanish galleon that uh Blackbeard the pirate, uh, Edward Teach was, you know, that was his real name was Edward Teach. Uh, Edward Teach was the captain of, and he scuttled it there. He sank it there on, intentionally. And, uh, that's actually a really neat piece of history. And the fact that you were jet skiing over that, you know, was wild. So again, that's one of my favorite rides. Uh, but I will tell you the ride that brought me to Tennessee the ride that brought this Southern California kid to say, screw California. Well, a lot of things that got me to say, screw California. But the thing that really got me saying, I want to move to Tennessee was that I rode, uh, I joined the Tennessee, uh, the Tennessee 600 and the Tennessee 600 is a charity ride where they typically put in at, in Knoxville and they ride the Tennessee river all the way up and back in around Nashville and typically they ended in Hendersonville and this is and Hendersonville is the town that I live in on Old Hickory Lake and you can and because that's where the Cumberland River connects and, and goes up I mean obviously it meets at land between the lakes where the Tennessee River and the Cumberland meet um, but they ride from Knoxville all the way down all the way to land between the lakes lock through come back down into into Tennessee because it, it goes into Kentucky Comes back down, wraps right in front of downtown Nashville, up past Old Hickory Lake, and into, and into uh, Hendersonville. And I did half of that ride. I did from Knoxville to De Decatur, Alabama. And it was some of the pre... And I did it like in July, which is, I mean, July in Tennessee, it, 
is not for the lighthearted. <laughs> some, some months, sometimes. Um, and we had some rough spots because it opens up into wider lakes and things like that. But it was easily the prettiest country I had ever seen. Uh, the cliff faces, the the red, the red earth with the green grass and the, and the trees dipping their roots in. It was like it was like being in a Disney cartoon. It was beautiful, and everywhere I stopped, people were the nicest people on the planet. And I I just was that was so alien to me was people genuinely just being kind. And I, I said, if I, if I could pick anywhere, it'd be Tennessee, I want to live here. And I fell in love with Knoxville, I fell in love with that college town. And I was like, oh man, I, I could live in Knoxville, heartbeat. Um, Nashville wasn't really my scene. Here comes my neighbor mowing his gravel in his backyard. Sorry, I'm sure you can hear that through the garage door. But anyway, Nashville, or uh, the Tennessee 600 was a, uh, was a major proponent of bringing me and my family here to Tennessee. And uh, that alone, just to see such a pretty country. Um, I had gone, I've done the long, I've done Long Beach to Catalina a million times, uh, Oceanside to Dana Point and back. Um, I actually rode from LA, from LA Harbor down to Oceanside. That was a haul. That, that was a, and, and the day we did it, it was rough and we were miles offshore and oh my gosh. And I think I got the worst sunburn of my life on that one. Um, but yeah, that I've done some, I've done some fun ones. Obviously there's spots in Florida. Um, you know, uh, but Ocracoke uh, Ocracoke and Pamplico Sound and the Tennessee River stand out. Uh, that's why I came back with Sea-Doo and we did the Chattanooga story on the Tennessee River. And if you haven't seen that video, please watch that video. It's one of my favorites. Um, and it's just gorgeous. Oh, it's gorgeous there. It's gorgeous country. Anyway, guys, uh, I've been rambling for too long. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of questions. Okay. R&D was making the best intakes. Uh, friendly message for Riva. They should make a better metal quality. Um... Sad, yeah, sad that R&D did go out of business. Um, but uh, Glenn, you know, Glenn and Bill really made some really good stuff. They were innovators. Um, it, it's a rat race, and quite frankly, racing dried up. And you know, when racing is such a part, uh, such a, a huge part of, of your business, you know, it's just too bad. Uh, I also via VSX and VXR. Uh, all right, let's see here. But that guy didn't. Okay, that didn't make any sense. So I'm being polite and cool. Something being a jerk, ripping. Yeah. Uh, oh, do you think Yamaha will bring out a ski to match the spark? Um, Technically, the EXR is their answer to the Spark, um, the or the EX series. I should, say, I should say EXR. EXR is like my favorite of the EX series, um, and they're adding to the EX series. They're very they they feel very confident with the EX series. The EX series has done really well. Um, so, uh, as far as trim control, doesn't the EXR have? The EXR does have trim control, um, but if you're talking like, hey, are they going to make an EX that can do wheelies like a Trix? Doubt it, because that's a little on the nose, and they're kind of like, why should we want it? I really don't see Yamaha doing that, but good question. Thank you, Mark. All right, let's see here. Do you have any news about Orca? <laughs> about the electric watercraft? Um, no, they haven't invited me to ride it. Um, I have reached out. They said, well, they kind of did a soft invite when they reached out to us about doing, you know, a, a press release and sharing the video and all that kind of jazz. Um, they mentioned they would love us to, to ride it, but it's not here in the States and we'll see. We'll see. 
I highly doubt it. I'm not going to hold my breath. Um, I, it strikes me as one of those concept vehicles that just get shopped around and then eventually go away. So we'll see. But that's a good question. Thank you. All right. All right. Should we VXR? I agree with you. Uh, Kawasaki review. Uh, yes, there will be a long-term Kawasaki review of the STX 160 LX. And that's going to sound repetitive because we did do a 160 LX review earlier. But that was literally with a day and a half of time on. No, it was one day. I had one day with the 160 LX. And it was a mixed review. I tried to be positive but it's a mixed review. I did show that there were certain things that were clunky and certain things just didn't feel right. Um, now that I have a production unit in my backyard on my trailer, I can tell you the ski has problems. Um, it's got problems. And, and let me take my ball of hatred that I have for not having a reverse and throw that out and just review it for what it is it still has some major problems um and unfortunately it's got some problems that aren't easily corrected uh, i'll go into detail on that later in the review uh, but there will be a kawasaki review of the 160 lx honestly i really wanted to like it but there, it's got problems, so I'm sorry. Uh, all right, let's see. Whatever happened to that ocean intercoastal waterway run? <laughs> okay, Chris, you're going to make me talk. Uh, dang it. I'm so ready to sign out of this. Um, let me just talk about this engine instead. This is cool. This is 620 horse. Let's talk about that. Okay. Um, all right, that ride that I wanted to do. There was a couple things I wanted to do about that ride. Um, this stupid shop stool sucks. Uh, sorry. Um, that the whole idea about that ride was how how far can we go with the most diverse water, bringing the most gas you can. Can you bring 20 gallons of gas with you? And how far can you go? Can you go 120 miles, 140 miles, 200 miles? How far are you going to go? And then the idea kind of ballooned into well should it be a race no it can't be a race because if someone gets hurt they're gonna sue me and I'm gonna get sued I'm gonna lose my house because some idiot doesn't know how to ride and it's gonna be my problem so I didn't want to do that um, so ugh. Uh, but um, Billy Cruz from the PwC trail finder he actually hit me up earlier this week because we were talking about doing some stuff on his skis. And he goes, hey, let me know when you're down. And I said, well, I, you know, the whole idea was that, you know, it was, I really wanted to have Jerry Gaddis do it, but Jerry had back surgery this year. So he'll be okay to ride the Yamahas in August, but not anytime sooner. I thought it'd be really funny if we did our, our fun ride the same weekend as World Finals. <laughs> Just to be a jerk, I guess. I don't know. I kind of want, I don't want, I don't want one of those 300 ski, 200 ski rides. Those are nightmares to me. That sounds like everything that would wake me up out of a cold sweat is going on a 300 ski ride. Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine that. 12 people in a group is a lot for me. So I don't really want to be babysitting that. Um, plus, I was thinking about buying pizza for everyone, and now I'm like, I really don't want to do that. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I'm still toying with the idea. I haven't really been, I'm not really married to it. And if I do announce it, it's going to be like on my personal Facebook page and it's not gonna be with a lot of warning. I'm gonna be like, yo bitches, we doing this next week. <laughs> and I'll be talking like that, no, I'm joking. Um, 
but it was literally like, okay, we're going. Drop what you're doing. If you want to go, we're going. Um, and I want to do it on like on a Friday. I don't want to do it on a Saturday or a Sunday. So that's even more. I want to thin it out. I mean, if 20 people show up, okay, cool. I'd be, I'd be tickled with that. I'll buy a bunch of Little Caesars pizza and we'll, you know, you guys bring your own beer. I'll have a soda pop and then, you know, have a couple slices of pizza. Um, and maybe I'll give out some free swag or whatever. But anyway, uh, it, it's in the ether. I'm not really married to it. This year has kind of effed everyone. So they kind of threw the ride out the window. But thank you, Chris. Uh, we'll, we will come back to that. All right, new Super Jet. Uh, if you're curious about the new Super Jet, I strongly recommend you look at the 2020 rule book for the Pro Watercross Racing Series. I'll leave it at that. You're good, no need to tiptoe around that. Make America great again. <laughs> Turbo the Spark and just call it the XP already. Uh, it'll be called the Spark X. Because they like putting X's at the end of things, like RXPX and GTRX and RXTX. I'll leave that at that. All right. All right. It will be like a PS5 versus Xbox Series on one. Yeah. I don't know. Video games are for little boys. Uh, anything new for Kawasaki? Um, probably more layoffs. That's a really mean thing to say. Uh, actually, Kawasaki sales are up. I shouldn't be so crass. I apologize. That's not fair. Um, no, no new product. No new product. Um, and I do not expect them to add brakes to anything anytime soon. I think we're probably three years minimum away from their actually launching a brake system. Gonna be real straight with you on that one. Um, we were gonna do an article on uh, how brakes have saved literally tens of thousands of dollars in damage, you know, damages to watercraft and potential lives. Um, some of the manufacturers wanna stay tight-lipped on that. Uh, they just, don't really want some of that stuff out. I think primarily because they don't want to discuss, you have to have comparative data when you talk about something like that. So if you say comparatively, hey, listen, in the last decade, I'm making a number up. 10 people died on jet skis, and in the, the most recent decade, only three people have died on jet skis. When you compare, you know, when you, when you have lowest common denominator numbers, and you go, okay, we've, we've averaged the numbers out and there's a lot less deaths in the last decade. That's good news. Brakes have done something to save lives. Here's the problem. They don't want to talk about how, how many people have died on jet skis. So it's kind of a PR nightmare. So anyway, that article I think is going to be mothballed. Um, alrighty. Dude. <laughs> uh, the more I ride, the more I realize it doesn't matter what you're riding. Just enjoy it. Uh, yeah, I'd agree, and then I'd disagree, and I'll tell you why. Give you a good example. This is going on way too damn long, guys. I'm so sorry. This is going on way too long. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I remember being a teenager. I'm the youngest, I'm the youngest in my family, I'm the youngest of the kids, and my older brother, who's seven years older than me, we were going to a car cruise or you know, a car show. And he just trash-talked so many cars. Hate the wheels on that car. Stupid paint job. Look at the welds on that guy's cage. What a piece of crap. Oh, look at the stance on this thing. It looks like crap. It's a freaking stink bug. Crap, 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 crap. And I'm like 15, 16 years old. I'm like, that's a cool Camaro. I like that Charger. Hey, it's a Dodge Dart. I'm a stupid kid. And he's like, oh, it's crap, it's crap, it's crap. And I remember being like, dude, you're so jaded. You're so freaking jaded. I can't get over how jaded you are. And he says, well, when you've been to enough car shows, you find out what your taste is. And once you've really come to understand what your taste is, 
ever, nothing else. You're like, oh, no, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. And I just, I remember being 15 and being like, man, what a jerk, yo. What? And now being 42, I'm worse than he is. I really am. And I'm also that way with watercraft. Because now I look at it as what's the design that went in here? What is the intention that they did? Was this a band aid? Was this slapdash? Was, was there thought put into here? What did an accountant get in the way and cheap out some parts? So now I'm actually a bigger stickler. Um, and I don't know if that's because of my job that I'm supposed to be a stickler. Um, but I can, uh, here's the other half of that though. And I, and I agree with what, what, what Craig is saying because sometimes you want to ride a 550. Sometimes you just want to jump on a ratty old school smoking blue smoke hazed out total throwback 550 JS Cowie and just go, I'm riding this POS with the paper thin foam tray, you know, pads and tearing up my knees and I don't care. Let's just and just brap all over the freaking lake. And you're like, okay, that was fun. I only rode for 10 minutes, wore me out because it's an effing chore to ride one of those, especially if you have a shoe size more than 10. Um, but yeah, so I agree. I agree and I disagree. All right, what's more comfortable, Yamaha FX or Sea Dew with a couple in the chop? Um, all right, Mark, that's a good question. Mark, I actually like your question so much. I have, I have swag. All right. These are the specs, um, the specs amphibian eyewear goggles. I like your question so much. I'm going to send you one of these as long as you're stateside. So Mark, uh, make sure you send me your, make sure you send me your, uh, mailing address as long as you're stateside but these are the goggles um they're they're nice foam you know it's a it's it's actually kind of a molded plastic but they're very soft on the skin this is a neoprene strap adjustable here even worn by me cool i look like bono <laughs> these are my bono glasses um but Anyway, I'm gonna listen to Rattle at Home when I get off this. Ah, uh, but you're getting these guys. I'm gonna send you these. And, uh, oh, it comes with a sticker too. Here, and I'll even send a watercraft sticker too. I got, I got a whole bunch of watercraft stickers. All right, Mark. So, all right, so what's more comfortable? Here's, that's a, that is a loaded question. And I'll tell you why it's a loaded question. Because the Sea-Doo, Sea-Doo ergonomics are the best in the industry. Hands down, hands down, 100%. Give the guy gold medal, blue ribbon, top of the podium. Sea Dew ergonomics on the GTI platform and the ST3 platform, by large, by far, 100%. It's a fact. America was first to land on the moon. It's a fact. Sea Dew's got the best ergonomics when it comes to a seat. Passenger seat, pretty good too. Every passenger, I've sat on the back, I'm comfortable, and I'm six foot two and 200 pounds. And um, yeah, I'm telling you, uh, see, the Sea Dew ergonomics are just where it's at. Where it's at. I actually prefer the GTI more than the SD3. Um, I wish the, the uh, GTI had tilt steering like the SD3. That's one of my favorite things. But I like the glove box more than I like the center storage. So that's personal opinion. But seating wise, the Sea Dew seat is by far the best. Argue, argue me. I'm, I'm telling you, it's the best. Go to a dealership, put your butt on one, and then go sit on an FX. You're gonna love the ST3 or the, I should just say the Ergolock seat. Here's the best thing about it, and I've said this a million times. I put my 78 year old father on a uh, GTX one time. And he's got a real bad hip, a real bad leg. He, he busted up his hip real bad when, uh, probably about 10 years ago. 
and uh, he's all held together. He looks like an erector set. He's all screws and bolts and plates and stuff. He sat down on that thing, and he was like, holy crap, this thing's so nice. I go, right. And he goes, oh, my gosh, it's super nice. And he rode, I mean, I put him on an F. He liked the FX comfort-wise, but he was like, dude, put me on the c I, I so prefer the c -Doo. And that meant something to me. Um, that meant something to me because I knew it was comfortable because I don't like sitting on a really wide saddle. I just don't like sitting with my knees out like, like you would on a wide seat. And the ergo lock seat is just so, you can just sit down comfortably like you're in a desk chair. It's super comfortable. So, but that's riding glass. That's just <laughs> cruising down the lake, glass water. I mean, just absolutely, you could, the reflection's so flat, you could shave. Um, but in CHOP, we get into a different question, all right? And I'm talking, when I talk CHOP, all right, I'm not talking one to two foot, you know, rollers, all right? I'm not talking, I'm talking windblown three to four foot, small white caps, got to get home, it's late in the afternoon, it's a rough ride. FX 100%. FX 100%. Uh, the FX hull, trim it up. Trim it one notch or two notches up from, from neutral. Go 45 miles an hour. Rat, tat, 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 tat. It goes straight. It doesn't wander. The, the chop, the wind blown, the, the, the current does not affect the trajectory of the FX hull. It doesn't, it just doesn't. And the ST3 in stock trim, I'm talking stock right plate, well, stock intake rate, stock sponsons, trim up, trim down, neutral, whatever. I don't care what you do with a, pa especially with a passenger, oh, you are going to beat, it's going to beat and just beat its way doing this it's gonna hunt meaning the nose hunts it, it searches it, it darts left to right and it smacks it, the nose comes down hard really hard when you come off of like a big forefoot and it goes crack and I mean it really you think you're like oh I'm gonna hurt this thing and honestly I was at a press intro and we were we were really tearing and I was I was uh, going across the uh, actually Lake Havasu uh, on the first and it was like a, it was a it was a 230 it was an R it was a RXT the black and blue RXT so that would have been an 18 and I hit a rough patch on the California side of the lake and I swear I cracked the hole oh I didn't it was fine but the sound it made when I came down it slapped so hard I was like, oh, 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 I'm hurting the ski. And so it's a catch-22. When people on YouTube ask me, like, well, what, what ski would you pick? I'm like, I would pick an FX with the ST, with the GTI Ergo Lock and Glove Box. Well, I want the Glove Box off the FX because that's a mile deep. With the tilt steering of the ST3, with the gas tank of the Cowie, and quite frankly, I'd rather have the Yamaha powertrain. And people just go, Boom. oh, but I want the Cowie pump. Cowie pump's phenomenal. So anyway, <laughs> listen to that Frankenstein answer. All right, I really want to. Be, uh, I was not sure if I could switch from Yamaha. I was a Yamaha rider for 20 years, and our team. Crazy bread, yum. Kawasaki. Kawasaki 2021 brakes. Reverse them now. I honestly do not see that happening. I just do not see that happening. And I'll tell you why I don't see it happening. And this is kind of a dumb... Money spent is money spent. And they don't want to spend a lot of money. Why would they spend all the money that they did to redesign the reverse handle on the left-hand side of the STX for one year if they knew and they know five years out what they're going to do. Why would they bother introducing the new STX with the reverse handle on the left-hand side 
when they knew the very next year they were going to have a smooth fairing, get rid of all that manual reverse stuff and put it on the handlebars for one year. That is throwing money down the toilet. You got to, I mean, that's, that's my thinking. So no, I, I do not see that, Johnny. All right. But what's Cowie waiting on? Dude, honestly, my honest opinion is that I think there's guys who are in Kawasaki who are in their 50s and 60s who are like, it's a fad. No one needs brakes. It's a fad. We didn't need it in the 80s. I think there's a bunch of old school guys who are like, nah, I don't need them. I, I, I'm not trying to be mean about it, but I, that's the only thing. That's the only thing that logically makes sense to me. All right, let's see here. Have you ridden Lake Powell? Oh, Lake Powell's beautiful. Oh, geez. Yeah, Lake Powell's gorgeous. Um, and and the, just painted desert, it, it's beautiful. Um, but I still go back to North Carolina and Tennessee River. Sorry. Maybe it's because it had the history thing to it, and that kind of tickled me. Um, there was just so, and there was such a, there was such a diversity of topography. That's really what just absolutely wowed me on those rides, Adam. So good question. Um, all right. How do you like that new GTI? Jason, I absolutely love it. I absolutely hand to God, 100% love the GTI platform. So I have not found anything about the GTI platform that I can complain about, really. Um, there's little quirky things, but honestly, it, I, I might as well say it. The GTI SE170 is, is now a contender for Watercraft of the Year. That's how much I 100% am behind that, that design. Um, all right. Uh, 300, it's flawless, same battery, purchased in 2010. Great product, and needs updating. Um, yeah, you know what, and I've heard, this, I've heard a lot of guys who have Ultra 300s and 310s say the exact same thing. So, um, <laughs> yeah, Little Caesar, yeah, buddy. Uh, <laughs> I'm a big spender, look out. Uh, all right, I can agree there. My wife always rides with me on my VX. Okay, broke my pelvis at 26, oh. Damn, Jason. All right. Watching Kawasaki says, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's why they won't change at the end of the day. Don't know. I think it's money. Personally, money money talks, dude. Money, money, money. If they if they had market share, I mean if they if they were uh, if they were printing cash, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you guys. I don't know what to tell you. Um, I jokingly said that I'd put up the keys in the pink slip for my 69 Charger that if they built a true STX 310 or a 300 and you could detune it to compete with the GP and compete with the RXPX, they'd sell every one of them. I still stand by that. I still stand by it. I think they'd sell every one of them, even without brakes. Because there are people who are diehard bleed green die-hard Cowie fans, but Cowie doesn't make the product that they want. And they're like, listen, I don't, you know, I want a, I want an Ultra, I don't, I, you know, but I want an Ultra that has all the bells and whistles but without the supercharger. Can I have that? No. Well, why not? I don't know. So, again, that's my thinking, is there, there's simply too many holes in the lineup, uh, in the Kawasaki offerings, um, that other people want, you know, they're, they're saying, well, I don't want 310 horse. I just want the 160, but I want the full size unit, but I want brakes, but I want a sound system, but I want luxury or whatever. I mean, that's just one, that's just one idea. So again, um, this has gone on way too long, but anyhow, I just wanted to check in with you guys. It's been a long time. Uh, we got a lot of fun stuff. If you haven't already, check out the uh, YouTube channel. Please subscribe. Honestly, like 3% of our views are subscribers. And I know it's all you guys. 
So subscribe. What's, what are you waiting for? Rah! Uh, the reason why it's important is that we need to get to 10,000. Once we get to 10,000, YouTube says, okay, you're not doing this in your basement. You're actually producing real content. We'll let people see it because they throttle down YouTube channels. So please, guys, get us to 10,000. Tell your friends, share videos, help me out. Let's get the let's get the YouTube channel to ten thousand. Um, I mean, I love. I mean, our views are crazy. We're doing great on views. I just need subscribers. That's the only thing. And so it gets me to ten thousand subscribers. It, it doesn't mean you're watching more or less videos. It just means that you click the subscribe button. You push the button. Okay. So anyway, thanks again. I'm worn out. Um, Mark, I'm gonna text you. You win the goggles. They're yours. Get them out of my garage. Um, all right, dude. Guys, thanks very much. Check out the YouTube channel. Thanks for reading the magazine. I'm going to go relax. I'm, I'm tired. It's been a long day. All right. Thanks again.